Hey, welcome folks. Today I'm going to go over a game from the Foxwoods Open, which I played last weekend. I was playing the white pieces. My opponent was rated about 2165, so he's pretty strong. Um, I think he was like a young guy. like So a lot of promising potential, like maybe like teen, like 20s, maybe early 20s or something like that. Um, but um, he was interesting. Uh, player, he had like a kombucha drink he was drinking, like a orange juice, and he was wearing like a hoodie, like a red hoodie. Um, he was ready, he was all healthy and all amped up. I think I was just drinking water, so nothing special. Um, but anyway, let's just get into the game. So I played e4, and this is a really good development. You can control light squares and everything. He plays this French defense. Um, we go into this winnerer variation. Um, he plays c5, and then I just go a3. And I know like uh, there's a game like Fisher in his memorable games. He goes over something like this, I believe. I can't remember, but this is pretty strong, I think, for white. And then, um, but no, my opponent just takes like. And this is a very normal exchange. Like you're giving up your dark square bishop um, for a very interesting uh, attacking game. The queen side space, better pawn structure, and uh, a bad bishop that's actually a good bishop in some cases. Like there was some famous game in the book of pawn power by Hans Kamoch about this. But anyway, he goes just knight e7, queen g4 I played, and um, he plays queen c7. And in the old days that I played for many, maybe two years, I've usually just went for this variation um, and just bit the bullet. And um, like knight e2, I'm, I don't know if this is like the exact move order, but like I just played positions like this where I try to push this pawn, and the games just get very like messy. And... Uh, and I remember I had lost against some guy named, I think his name is Cholinsky. He had some queenside pawns. And this was like in year of 2016, maybe. Um, I can't remember. But um, yeah, that was in like in, when I was living in um, upstate New York. So, but no, I just play bishop d3. I think this is just makes more sense. The positions are just easier to understand and better. Um, to play practically and he goes c4 what the heck like what the heck if he uh, does normal play though like I think they go like this and then um, I mean I was thinking like maybe this or something like something like this um, I think and that was pretty good but um, yeah or even 92 and then um, like there's just many variations like if they go here we can take and this is um kind of the same thing as before but now the queen is or the the bishop is outside the pawn chain same as the old variation i was showing you guys earlier so there's just many cool positions but instead he just plays c4 which is breaking all of the rules of chess like what the heck can't be playing like this but it's a normal thing, and I feel like I've seen some game about this. Like, I don't know if it was a Nepomniachi, but, like, I think some of those elite players tried this stuff. Um, the plans are still there. Like, maybe you could play f6 or b4, but, um, yeah, we'll see. So he goes queen a5, and I just developed with bishop d2. I, like, I'm just trying to develop my pieces. I don't really thinking about anything, like, right now. Um... I just know, I mean, the general idea is the position is like this. Uh, pawns are pointing for the king's side, and sometimes white. I think the actual plan is to play on this side of the board, like maybe target f7, like sometimes like a knight here. Uh, sometimes you win f7 in some variations. I forgot my theory offhand, but I know you can win that f7 pawn in some lines. And like black can play on the queen's side and maybe like pass a pawn and do some cool stuff over there. And it's like really weird vacuums, I guess you can say. Like, I, I don't know if you call this like a dual vacuum or like a deluxe vacuum. Um, 
we can find out about the vacuums, uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Grandmaster uh, Raven Stewart's uh, positional chess course. I gotta give a shout out for that. But that's like, uh, but yeah, I think in the old, when I was learning chess, I was thinking this is like a split board. And you can see one of my earlier videos where I had like a split board. It was my first win against a 2000 player. Um, like a quote, unquote, yeah, split, a split board. But um, I think I do, I do decent in these vacuum positions. I think that it's just easier to kind of focus on your own plans. <laughs> I think like it's just like and not worry too much about your opponent's plans because it's like a plan versus plan, like a race almost sometimes, like or even the King's Indian stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, so he's just developing normally as well, and I just castle. Like, now I got my two pieces developed. Bishop d7. And, like, I was still thinking here, like, does my knight really attack this pawn, or do I move on this side of the board? It looks like he wants to castle. Um, queen side, I mean, am I ready for that? And, um, but also I was annoyed because he was also, I mean, this isn't really a threat. He wanted to win this c2 pawn sometimes with queen a4 to here. And that's been around for a little bit of moves, and I was prepared to sacrifice that pawn because that is really good to sacrifice that pawn because then this bishop over here becomes like super strong, um, and this queen loses time, and I was prepared for that, but he didn't do it. Um, so anyway, I just played a4 just to remove that idea, um, and he castles, and I just develop my rook. I mean, just uh, and I'm kind of like threatening this a little bit. It's not a real threat, but like, um, yeah, it's it's annoying, kind of. I don't know if the discoveries are even. I mean, later down the road, oh, if they're good sometimes, because even a sacrifice on b5 can open this and win the pawn on a7. But um, in any case, he just didn't go for that or allow that at all. He was good 97. And uh, I was just trying to think, like, where is my worst place piece? And um, my queen was just hitting g7, and it's kind of a target. Like, uh, there is uh, my friend uh, Grandmaster Raven Stewart's course, where on certain, like, the fifth rank, that's kind of like a vulnerable area to be attacked often, especially for, like, bishops, I believe. Um, so I was just kind of uh, a little, little taken up back by my queen's position and the queen f4 there's knight g6 it's on this kind of vulnerable fourth rank so i just played queen h3 um and uh yeah there's there's some uh, annoying ideas you can play in the g file like um so and in some variations with queen h3 i'm kind of threatening g4 not here uh because he just takes the and the g files open but um yeah i'm just trying to get my queen out of the way of things and also I want to get my queen back into the game like that like so then my queen will be doing something like maybe attacking who knows um but no he plays h5 and then I go g3 I guess h5 prevents g4 but I don't know if that was a real threat um but yeah now I get to do my plan I do feel like f6 is his strongest idea and I do kind of prevent it later in the game a little bit like dissuade it uh, as you guys will see but this is out of this world. Why could you take, like, I didn't know you could actually play like this, like, as black. Like, you could, apparently, I, I mean, I haven't analyzed this with computer or anything, but apparently, like, yeah, he's taking this pawn in. It's going to take a long time for me to exploit this. Because um, now, I think black has a clear kind of long-term advantage. If I don't do anything, this pawn's going to end, end the game. So... Um, I just play bishop c1, and I'm really ready to kind of meet this um, queen takes on c3, which is bishop c2 and bishop d1, winning back the bishop. That was my tactical idea. Um, but yeah, this bishop is, I mean, it's okay on this diagonal, but it's not really doing much. And in principle, in these positions, you want it on this diagonal. Uh, it's just outside the pawn chain, and then it just makes it a really strong bishop. Um, but no, he protects his bishop with b5. Uh, that's super committal. But, I mean, I don't know what else. He seems like he needs to get his, he wants to get his queen out of the way and everything and, and secure things up. Um, but even if it is secure, like, it's never going to be permanently secure. Like, right now his king is, uh, not well placed. If his king was on the, 
this side of the board, this is just winning, I think. Like if his king is on g8, probably it's just winning. Um, but yeah, I somehow have time and I go for queen f1. I'm just trying to bring my pieces into the game and um, I was a little afraid of f6 opening the position, so I'm trying to get my queen kind of behind towards, towards the action. Um, and I play queen here uh, because, um, like, just kind of uh, protecting this uh, f6 idea, because now if he plays f6, I can target the e6 pawn. And also I want to play maybe bishop, uh, get the bishop out of the way. That was also kind of an idea I was thinking about. And he goes queen c7, and now I finally develop my bishop on the best diagonal. Um, and this is very useful in the game, as you shall see later. Uh, he plays rook d7. I don't know if that was a good move. I th think f6 was his best chance for a fight, and I was going to take and then play bishop f1 to try to target like this, maybe. Um, yeah, that, at least that was the immediate idea. So he just goes rook d7 defending everything on this rank and just saying he's solid, he's a pawn up. Um, and I still go bishop f1. He moves his queen to here, d8. It looks like he feels his queen isn't very active. And so you'll see later he's going to try to activate his queen like maybe like this or that. or I feel like he needs to throw pawns though. I don't even know if this is a very active idea. Like maybe he should just try like g5 even or sacrifice. Um, but he doesn't try that. He just plays rook d7. I go bishop f1. He goes queen d8. And now I complete my idea of bishop h3. So now in some variations I'm going to take here and then play e6. And then um, this will open his king and my queen's going to replace the bishop on the light squares. And that is going to be a very annoying, like, because now bishop d if his go king goes to c7, then his bishop d6 is coming. This knight's a little bit loose. Uh, it's just not pleasant sometimes. Uh, he goes knight there to reinforce his knight. And I just complete my idea of the queen here because now I don't think f6 is as strong with the knight over here. Because um, now I, if he plays f6, I can always cap capture with the knight here, hitting the rook. Um, so he goes queen g8, I go queen here, and now I'm going to try to attack his king with this battery. Um, and he does understand this threat too, it starts moving his king out of the way. And I was just sitting here like calculating a little bit. Like, um, and I realized, like, his knights are defending his king if I'm trying to mate him in, in sacrifice. So I got rid of, um, I traded my bishop just to get rid of one of his defenders of his king. Uh, I think Alexander Aliekin does this a lot. Um, and it, this is kind of reducing the assault ratio, or increasing the assault ratio for my attack and reducing his defenders. Um, because my uh, bishop here is technically a defender, not even contributing to my attack. So I just took here, and then I play bishop c5. I calculated this really interesting, some variations. I did calculate this as well. Um, and um, I thought this was interesting, but um, it was by no means like forced, I guess. But um, yeah. And uh, it was kind of like a little bit of dead water sometimes. I was trying to make like that idea work. Um, and maybe it does work. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, very, um, very complicated for sure. And um, yeah, it was a, uh, or there's just many ideas and I was confused a little bit. But bishop c5 I thought was the strongest move. Um, Oh, for also, I was looking at some ideas like, um, like rook takes here, pawn takes, knight takes, and um, yeah, this is kind of winning. Like there's ideas like this um, as well, but I decided on bishop to c5, and I realized like that his king, if he wastes a move to the e8 square, then his knight, which would defend on c8 would uh be a back rank mate um so i'll show some variations here like so bishop c5 um actually that did kind of happen in the game but like um 
what else would he do here? Like, I guess, um, well, yeah, king e8. King e8 is losing like this. Uh, and um, I guess that transposes kind of to the, to the game a little bit. But, um, yeah, I don't think his king can run. And this is kind of very tricky. He did play knight e7. I think that was correct. Then I played bishop to d6. I think this is the key move. Uh, because here's the thing. If I play this sacrifice, this is uh, some calculation that I had. And um, I wasn't really convinced that this was winning. I think his queen can kind of come back and defend everything. And uh, maybe black is just better here long term and everything. Um, yeah, or even f6 even. Like this is just better. Like this knight is bad and not contributing to anything. So bishop d6, I think they say, or I, I was thinking this is just a good high class waiting move. Um, but also, like, I don't know if he could try anything like g5. Um, I was thinking that um, there's like some ideas like maybe I feel like this makes a difference like um, this because now if he takes I'm threatening his mate like this um, and stuff like that and his queen can't defend all of that um, so I don't know if there was a defense with this ending position in my calculations here like there's a defensive contact he needs to maintain with his king like that. It's very uh, suspicious, um, but he does go for king e8, and then I just saw this was just winning. Um, yeah, and he's just paralyzed, kind of like he can't really move anything, and he's getting. I have a threat that he can't stop. Like rook takes would just increase my ta my attack. Um, like. Well, this would just mate, and yeah. So I'll show you guys this. Um, yeah, that's mate. Uh, but yeah, he just goes a3. I think he was just very angry, this position. Um, and kind of realizing, I don't know if he really, I don't know what mate, mistake he made. I think he just didn't play f6. Um, but yeah, now he's, I mean, he's playing on, but this is just, mating and I, I he let me play the checkmate so yeah that was a good game uh, thanks for watching and uh, keep improving your chess and studying uh, and yeah keep up the good work thank you all